Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. A whole new compact tractor was unveiled this week, and I promise you, it's different than anything you've ever seen. Watch. I was speaking today with Praveen Penmesta, who is the CEO and founder of the Monarch Tractor Company. And Praveen, I have not heard of the Monarch Tractor Company until last week, and I'm not sure anybody had. You've had a product introduction this week. Tell us a little bit about the background of the company. Yeah, Monarch Tractor is uh, deploying an all-electric driver optional data hub of a tractor, Mike. So this is a compact tractor with a peak horsepower of 70, 70 horsepower. That does everything a compact tractor does. The reason you have not heard about us, even though we've been working on this for a long time, is we did not want to reveal anything or talk about what we were up to until we were ready. So I'm actually at one of our test sites, which is a vineyard in Livermore, California. We've been testing here for like a year and a half. And before that, we were testing our tractor in India and in other parts of California. Tell us where the idea for the tractor came from. It, it was your idea originally, right? Yeah. So there's four founders. There's uh, myself. Uh, there's uh, Dr. Zachary Omohundro, who comes from the robotics world out of Carnegie Mellon. He has a PhD in robotics. There's Carlo Mondavi from the Mondavi wine family. And there's Mark Schwager. Um, we were all, it's, it's almost like all of us were on different journeys, but we all came together for Monarch Tractor with all of our experience. Uh, the idea came out of some of the work that we were doing in ag, ag tech for all the farmers. A lot of farmers were approaching me in my previous company saying, uh, Praveen and Zach, you guys do robotics. Well, can you help us make an automated planter, an automated harvester? Um, you know, those kind of robotic solutions. And we did a lot of those. And what we learned each time we went out there, Mike, was uh, apart from doing the operation, which is either planting, cultivating, harvesting, um, you know, we were doing a lot of the same things again and again and again. So we were trying to find power for these machines. We were trying to add GPS for the machines. We were trying to add cameras and computers and all of this stuff. And that's when we were like, hey, you know, if we actually had a next generation tractor that we could plug these quote unquote implements to, then the cost of development and the cost of the implement for the farmer would be a lot less. And that's when we finally, we said, you know, we looked around, we thought somebody must have done this. Somebody must be working on this. But we realized that none of the big equipment companies are interested in the smaller tractors. They're all focused more on the big commodity crops and the grain. So that's what led us to start Monarch Tractor saying, if we had an electric tractor that could power the implements, if we had a tractor that had cameras and sensors, that the implement can use, but still is a normal tractor that the implement can attach to. Now farmers can get their operations done at a lower system cost. Uh, since you're in California, there's got to be a huge number of uh, tractors that go in the vegetable and the fruit industry. And, and, and a lot of the pictures I've seen of the tractor, that's where it is. Is that your kind of your target market or do you see it branching out in other areas as well? Yeah. Initially, for sure, we are targeting the fruits and vegetables market, the fruits, nuts, vegetables. Um, so the reason for that is, um, you know, compact tractors are used a lot in the fruits and vegetable and nuts market. So it made, uh, it makes a lot of sense, but also the interesting thing about a compact tractor, Mike, is you see them everywhere, right? Even some of the larger farms have a few of these tractors. And there's a reason why the compact tractor is also sold as a utility tractor by the tractor companies. You see them in airports, you see them in construction, you see them on the side of the highways, mowing, land management, etc. Let's talk a little bit about the tractor. Uh, tell, tell us about the, the, the power, how that works. Uh, does it have three-point and PTO, which I assume it does? And, and just tell us a little bit more about the tractor itself. Yeah, the tractor, again, is a compact tractor, Mike. So what that is, is we can do a 70 horsepower peak, 40 horsepower all day. It has twice the amount of torque compared to uh, a similar diesel tractor. The reason for that is the advantage of the electric motor for us. So, uh, but, uh, but it's still a tractor. So we have a three-point hitch. We have a P540 RPM PTO. We have a category one, category two, uh, three-point hitch at the back. We have a full hydraulic circuits at the back that you can use hydraulic implements on. The beauty, Mike, is all of these are software controlled. 
So what that means for the farmer is if you can take your best tractor driver, have them go down this row, whether it's a mowing operation or the spraying operation, and we can learn from your best tractor driver and repeat the operation without the driver in the field, not just from a tractor driving down the row, but also controlling the implement. So we can adjust the PTO, the three-point hitch, and the hydraulic pressures and flow rates for the implement while keeping an eye on it, just like your tractor driver does with our cameras that are around the tractor. So if I want to buy a tractor to brush hog my pasture with, I just uh, maybe drive it around and do it one time, and then it knows what to do the next time. Exactly, yeah. It, it is a fully smart tractor in the sense you could totally bring it down here and say, okay, turn on the sprayer and spray this whole tract of, uh, uh, you know, of, of the vineyards. But there are a lot of farmers who are very specific about the way they want to do the operation, right? They know that this row, for example, is at the end of this whole tract and might need to get a different uh, amount of spray compared to something that's on the other side of this tract. So your best tractor driver can tune those things, and right from day one, there's no compromise for farmers when they run the operation. And what about a front-end loader for the tractor? So a front-end loader is going to be an option uh, for sure. Um, Mike, and it's something that we are working on down the road. The reason I'm saying that is because we are automated and we have cameras in the front. We are currently testing what the front-end loader does to the view of our tractor, what the cameras can see, cannot see, and things like that. How long can it go without charging? And, and you, I, I notice you have a, a provision. If, if it is in yeah. a farming operation, you need to change out batteries. How does that work? Yeah, again, when we talk to farmers, Mike, and we've been working with them directly in their field uh, for like more than a year and a half with our latest iteration of the tractor, what farmers said was utilization is key. Like during harvest and stuff, we cannot afford to have a tractor down, recharge it. So we looked at how they were used their diesel tractors, and we came up with a mobile swap cart. So it's a cart with our spare battery that you can take to wherever you're running the operation. And out in the middle of the field with a single person, you can swap out the battery in our tractor in under 10 minutes. So what that means is it's just like pulling your tractor out to refuel it and sending it back in. You do the same thing with our uh, swap cart. You know, we, we only think about farming during the day, but if you have an autonomous tractor, it really doesn't care if the sun's up or not on, on most tasks. There's not enough time in the day for farmers today. Uh, so how can we give you more time? And actually our tractor is even better at the night because we control the lighting. Our tractor has full work lights on the roof, uh, which allows us to kind of have a very good view around the tractor of what's going on. And we also notice that during the night, there's less interruptions from people walking by, equipment, cars, trucks, you name it, right? So whereas out in the middle of the field, you never know during the day who's going to come by right now, right? So the night operations are actually more efficient. It's cooler temperature. So our tractor uh, with our own lights actually functions even better. Is the technology there to take it up to a row crop application too? Definitely. We are planning to take it one size up and also one size down. But also, Mike, long term, we are not going to be doing a 150 horsepower tractor. Our goal is to take it to the 120, uh, 100, 120 horsepower. The reason for that is right now, the horsepower of the tractor, Mike, is dictated by the number of rows you can do with a single driver. So even in vineyards and row crops, you try to do as many rows as possible because you're trying to maximize uh, the driver time, which is the biggest driving uh, cost component for you as a farmer. With our tractor and decoupling the, the labor cost from it means that you can have two of our tractors doing what a 100 horsepower tractor does at the same or lower cost with much lower labor costs. And now you can actually customize the rows and the applications and the processes for those rows instead of compromising on it. Tell us about the price of the tractor and how will it be distributed? Will you, will you ever have a dealer network on down the road? Our base price is $50,000. For $50,000, you get an all-electric tractor. You get basic automation features, which allow you to take the driver out of the seat and run down this row and do the basic operations. You also get the data collection capabilities for $50,000.
we have options like four wheel drive the front front loader that you talked about and the battery swap right from a distribution standpoint uh, mike what we have seen is farmers uh, have a lot of infrastructure for repair a lot, a lot of the large farms have barns with welders and lifts and things like that that we can use to help them repair service and maintain but we are also starting to talk to uh, some large equipment companies who have existing dealer networks that we can kind of leverage uh, for so service support deployment so the dealer network or the support people that we are going to bring on board um, our philosophy is farmer first with the full right to repair and customize the service and support network is not a revenue uh, consideration for us we want to use technology to enable the farmers to repair maintain and service their equipment so the maintenance costs are a lot less all the engine maintenance goes away your tier 4 emissions equipment goes away so you get a lot of uh, uh, content removed from the tractor stuff that can go wrong since it's electric and uh, we have data on it very often we can we can identify these issues mike and help the farmer fix it with support from our personnel you had your product introduction this past tuesday when will this product be available to the general farming public or anybody who wants to buy one so we are encouraging people to sign up uh, we are taking uh, reservations right now the tractor will be commercially sold in the second half of uh, next year 2021 and the reason for that mike is we are still want to make sure that by the time we release it it's a robust product and every day we are doing testing and every day uh, we are now starting to build out our manufacturing facility in livermore california and also in the next month or two you'll see more announcements about some large manufacturing companies that are going to uh, step into the fray to support our manufacturing and deployment If you're making a smaller one it sounds like you you do have your eye on the my audience which uh, most of us are weekend farmers we don't we don't derive our income from the land but uh it's a hobby out there and um you know I, when when I was preparing for this interview I was thinking about if if I could get off that tractor in the brush hog in August and not have to go back to that I think I would do that I mean there's there's times it's kind of fun but yeah. if I didn't have to do that I could be doing something else so I'm really intrigued with with the autonomy uh, part and the electric part as well uh just looking at your audience i was very excited about this phone call cuz your audience is exactly the kind of people that we expect to to purchase our tractor initially and to use it and to get the maximum benefit out of it for example right as a hobby farmer you want to make sure uh, not only the time side but also you're safe cuz you very often your family is around this tractor is in close proximity etc um So our tractor has a lot of camera safety features. So, for example, if you approach our tractor while the PTO is running from the back, we can turn off the PTO for you, preventing tractor rollover. A lot of hobby farmers are not trained, so very often, uh, you know, they they'll try to do things with the tractor that the that is beyond tractor capability. But when we all looked at those, we said, "Hey, you know." these are all uh, features that we should add to our tractor to make it the safest tractor on the planet as well so our tractor has sensors to prevent rollover overloading tipping things like that and we're using the same sensors for automation to use the to provide those kind of features as well and that's where i think a lot of your audience uh, mike is going to get very excited about our tractor is the ease of use the fact that they can automate some of the features and the safety site appreciate you watching my videos if you'd like to subscribe to my youtube channel i'd be honored click the mike face icon and check the bell so you're notified when i post future videos here's a link to my website and the tractor fun store with unique gift ideas for the tractor owner and here's another video you might want to watch thanks for watching